in Italy. Well, let's speak now to Dr. Sander van der Linden, a social psychologist at the University of Cambridge. You've studied this in depth and, and, and how to, I think it was one of the phrases you used, how to inoculate against uh, fake news. What are, the, what are the sort of people, who are the sort of people who are susceptible, sensitive to this fake news? Well, I think it's really important to think of this as a spectrum. So some people are what we call vaccine hesitant. So those people may be exposed to misinformation and fake news and are just hesitant about actually getting vaccinated. There's people who are currently refusing vaccinations but may change their minds based on scientific evidence. And then there's those who are propagating conspiracy theories and anti-vax communities in which nobody, uh, no one is currently vaccinating that are isolated from the rest of society, sort of like an offline echo chamber. So I think it's helpful when we talk about the psychology of anti-vaccination to distinguish between these different groups and their different motivations for believing uh, what they believe. Okay, well then just looking at one of those groups, just explain how the trust in medicine and vaccination has drained away and why. Is it down to conspiracy theories or is it down to just a, a, the lack of trust in big organizations now and government? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. So you see vaccine hesitancy across the political spectrum. So distrust plays a role for both liberals and conservatives in the sense that one side may be thinking that uh, the government is implanting nodes in vaccines or restricting your freedom through mandates and, and other conspiracy theories. Where on the other end, we're talking about conspiracy theories uh, regarding big pharma and big corporations. So I think conspiracy theories are definitely contributing uh, to vaccine hesitancy. They become more popular, more people endorse them. Um, this is also related to the issue of fake news. News and, and misinformation and uh, the increased access that people now have on the internet to basically you know bolster whatever belief they have so I definitely think that that plays a, a, an important role um, but when you look at anti-vax communities I think there's a group psychology at work there where you know none of your neighbors are vaccinating nobody you know is vaccinated that is the the norm and because those communities are you know entrenched in in their echo chambers are difficult to reach um, no matter how many facts you're going to throw at them um, there is a, a, a important social psychology um, that takes over in terms of, of just doing what other people do and yeah. believing what other people believe. So a sort of digital herd immunity. I'm so sorry, uh, Dr. Uh, van der Linden. We are out of time. I wish we had much more time to talk to you. Uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us here.